Hi, I'm Dan Herbert from Point Blank Music School, and in this fourth molecular tutorial, we'll be looking at some of the phenomenal processing capability which molecular has to offer, and also look at some of the key features common to specific effects. So let's jump in and take a look at some of the spectral-based effects. I'm going to load up plagiarism first, which essentially generates chords or harmonics based on the dynamics of the incoming audio and also the various settings. It can create some great vocoded type textures or even stab sounds. So let's press play. Just going to adjust the mix so we just hear purely the sound of the effect. First thing we can do is try out the different oscillator types. So it's basically 16 built-in oscillators here and these are all tuned according to the pitch setting here and also the freak map which cycles through a number of pre-programmed intervals. So it goes through major, minor, might get some seventh chord textures in there as well as other harmonic relationships. If you want finer control when moving this, just hold down the shift key. There we go. And we can also introduce an element of kind of detune just by increasing this random control here. a slightly thicker texture and then we've got a depth parameter here as well and this defines how the incoming audio affects plagiarism a bit like sensitivity along the bottom you've also got your standard envelope control so you've got attack if we want to get a faster response then you can just tighten up that release time and you've also got a hold good let's just have a quick play with this frequency map here Cool. Now, many of the sounds we're getting out of this are fairly dissonant. A great feature that Native Instruments have introduced is something called pitch quantization. So if I click on this little tuning fork up here, we enter the pitch quantization window. And what this allows us to do is to assign a pattern, a series of chords, to any pitched effect slot within Molecular. So let's uh, assign the pattern to plagiarism. I'm then going to program in a pattern. So to program, just click on this little arrow and select pattern one. And then let's start off with, say, a major seventh chord. Go on to pattern two. And I can copy and paste. And let's make this one a minor seventh chord. So let's press play now. And straight away, you can hear change the texture. If I hit pattern 2 and recall that, so obviously you don't have to sit here and recall the patterns manually. We could make use of something like step sequence solo. So let's get it to change every couple of bars. So pull this down to two bars and then assign this to the pattern. Just, there we go. Good, and we can scroll through. Find different textures. So essentially this quantizes all the pitch elements within the effect and allows us to keep in key all the various different pitch effects within Molecular. Let's call up another effect now. Dual Comb and Resonatarium are well worth checking out if you're into resonators, but I'm going to open up Spectral Hold. And now let's press play. So Spectral Hold allows us to freeze incoming audio. So if I press the play button here, what we're doing is freezing different elements of that drum loop. Probably the easiest way to trigger this is if we right click on it, choose MIDI and OSC Learn, and then just hit a MIDI key. And now, good. To keep it going constantly, I can click on the infinite button down here. And then each time I hit the key, 
it freezes a different part of the spectrum. We can adjust the loop length or bin size. Get these kind of stuttering, granular type effects. And we can also introduce an kind of element of randomness to it, the loop as well. You might also notice down in the bottom left we've got an x.gate button and several effects have this button and essentially all will happen when I trigger and freeze the spectrum we don't hear any of the dry signal. Cool, so that's great for kind of creating ambient textures. Let's move on and jump on to DSP number two. So all these effects are mainly based on delays and granular effects. I'm going to select band delays and open this up. Let's press play. Okay, let's push the mix up so we only hear the sound of the effect. So the band delay is basically a stereo eight tap delay and each of those taps is routed through a bandpass filter. Now we can use this like a conventional multi-tap delay or I like to push up the resonance. We get a kind of pitched element to the sound. Now, as this has got a pitched element to the sound, I can then also make use of the pitch quantization. So let's assign this pattern. We've still got the um, modulation, so just cancel that for now. So transpose tunes or sets the center frequency of the bandpass filters. Now this band delay has got a pattern control. Now if we click on this little arrow here, it opens up the pattern window into this main display and we've got eight separate patterns okay and we can control the amplitude the pan the delay time and the cutoff for each of the eight taps so if I just choose amp let's turn that down so we can only hear two of those let's go to cutoff you can hear how it can tune them Okay, if we put the others in, go back to cut off. We can also assign different kind of pan positionings. Now, you won't hear any of the effect of the pan positioning unless you increase pan mod down here. We can also create individual delay times for each of the taps. Now this is going to be based on the delay time set down here. So at the moment that's set to sixteenths. We can sync or unsync that simply by clicking here. Okay, so we could set that to eighth notes. And we can also affect the maximum delay time by adjusting this parameter here. If we want to, we can assign another pattern. And again, we can copy and paste between the different patterns. So pattern two, paste. Okay, and just do this quickly. Select pattern two. Go on to pattern three and you get the idea. So we can set this up in a number of different ways and then recall these patterns when needed. Now, quite a cool trick in Molecular is the ability to feed back effects in on themselves. So if I come up to routing and then click on the patch button, we can see this simple routing section here. And essentially what we can do is select an output and then select an input. So here, for example, I'd feed back from effect three back into the input of effect one. I just want to feed back effect two in on itself and we can also do feed forward effects here as well and then I'm going to turn up the amount or level and then turn it on so you have to be careful with any feedback because sometimes it can oscillate out of control that can sometimes create quite cool sounds but it can also damage your speakers and damage your ears so if it goes a bit wild and crazy then turn it off straight away and that should keep it under control and then just adjust the level back down again so the final feature we're going to check out is the timing quantization we find this in the same place as pitch quantization and it's this row here and what this allows us to do is to actually quantize the controls so if i press play 
And then as I adjust the transpose, just pull that down. You can hear it reacts instantly. Now if I turn on timing, click here, and let's just set it to half a bar, so it's really obvious. And then just bring down transpose now. You can see I'm moving it, but you're only hearing it change. There we go, and now. So this will quantize the timing for all parameters on this effect, whether I'm controlling it manually or modulating it from an LFO, and it's really useful for creating kind of stepped rhythmic based effects. You can see the whole series on Point Blank's YouTube channel, and I hope these tutorials will help you get the most out of this amazing program. We cover a wide range of software for native instruments on our courses. Check out Point Blank's website for more details.